Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to verse 16. I read, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things, or that I have already reached perfection, but I keep walking toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. Look at something. I am, I am walking as a Christian. I am walking as a Christian. I keep walking toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. Jesus Christ saved us for something. Anyone who is truly saved cannot remain the same. You are saved for something. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You can be a genuine Christian. To be a Christian is a reality. You can be a genuine Christian. Jesus has to be real in your life. Like today we are in church. Some of our brothers and sisters are not here for one reason or the other. What matters is the spirit. The spirit that you possess. So the title of our message today is The Spirit of a Mature Christian. Write it down. The Spirit of a Mature Christian. When we say Christian, this is what we are talking about. The Spirit of a Mature Christian. Let me read again. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 16. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. Take note, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain, take note here, it means it's not an easy matter. I strain, I try my best. I strain to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. Is calling us where? Up to heaven. Is calling us up to heaven. Verse 15, I hope all of you who are mature Christians will agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. Verse 16, but we must be sure to obey the truth we have learned already. Clap for Jesus Christ. We must be sure to obey the truth we have learned already. Paul say I strain, I focus on my energy in meditation, in my spirit, and in my works, in my actions. I focus all of myself to be what Christ saved me from. We are saved to become something. There is a goal. There is a talent. Christianity cannot be lukewarmness. Whereby you just imagine like an illusion, I am a Christian. It's not an imagination. It is the reality of an effective spiritual life. That is Christianity. There is a goal we have. We are saved for Jesus Christ. We are saved for Jesus Christ. I think during the announcement, you might have heard 
the person who read the announcement spoke about church attendance. And in the book of Hebrews, you see it there. I think it should be Hebrews 10, 25, I don't know, something like that. And it is read in that scripture that, do not neglect the meet, our meeting word together, as it is the attitude of many people. Instead, encourage such people who are neglecting it. Rebuke them. What they are doing is not correct. They are relaxing. Am I speaking now? Relaxing. We are not to relax. We have a goal. We must gather. Now, if you read this word of God and you accept it, Lord, this is your word. By its very nature, it will change you. It will change your decisions. If you had a decision that I am neglecting church services, immediately it changes your decision. You start finding yourself now very devoted. You start spending your effort, your energy to meet up. You say to meet up. We are saved to be ruled with the spirit of obedience. The spirit of Christ that drills us towards obedience. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go and make disciples and teach them to obey all what I have taught you. Then I am with you. It means I will only be with you and these people if all of you are in what? Obedience. That is how you can know the strength of a church. That is how you can know the strength of a Christian. Not by anything but by obedience. The moment you are obedient to Christ, you attract him. John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my words. And if you obey my word, my father will love you, and I too will love you, and we shall what? Come and be with you. So obedience attracts what? God's presence. You can know the strength of the church by obedience of that church towards Christ. The more the pastor, the Christians, the members are obedient to Christ, the more Christ is in that church. The more of his power, the more of his spirit, the more of his glory. This year, God has written this book for us through his spirit to take us to another level. Your life cannot be the same. I say, I pray your life will move to another level in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Christianity is a call, an upward calling towards heaven. Preparing people to meet the Father. Preparing people for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just entertaining people to be comfortable with the ways of the world. You are here to be prepared. The Bible says when Jesus shall come, he shall come to take his people. A church that is without blemish, without spot, without wrinkle. So as a church, we have a goal to be like Christ. Apostle Paul humbled himself and said, not that I have attained what? Perfection. That is me to hear. I've not attained perfection yet. But one thing I know is that I cannot keep on repeating my past. Talk to somebody. Say, so one thing I know is that as a mature Christian, I cannot I am saved for heaven. I am saved for the future. I am saved as a reality of a transformed life. That is it. So, close the door of weaknesses. Those who are having too much weaknesses, you don't want to leave it. Let the person with a better lifestyle be your example. Learn that today in the church. If you discover you have a lot of weaknesses, you are weak in a lot of things, let the Christian whom you see with a better character, let him be your what? Example. Don't be 
instead insult that, that person. Don't instead minimize such a person. See that person as the Bible to you. See that person as an encouragement to you. Because Jesus knows you as you are weak. Jesus knows that person who is striving. If you know Jesus, you will know that person who is striving. Am I talking to you? Because Jesus is the one dragging that person what? To the upward call. It is high time that we must have the spirit of a mature Christian. The spirit of a mature Christian is the spirit that gives a never-ending hunger to know Christ. Each day you experience that there is what in you. Hunger to know God more. That is the spirit of a mature Christian. So better now is not good enough. That's the meaning of the verse to come. The verse to come is not from Okada to Prado. From that is how you always interpret Bible. Only one side, physical side. The best is to come is that Apostle Paul says, I am striving by the grace of God to realize that I finally become all what Christ saved me for. What do you want to become? A holy guy? A famous person? Whatever you want to be, become all what Christ saved you for. Don't minimize that word saved. When we are saved, that makes a difference in our life. Not when we only become something, but when we are saved. So what shall it profit a man to gain? The whole world, but you are not what? Saved. That's the problem now. So to have something is not the problem at all. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things you are desiring. They were what? They shall be added. What is important is to become what you are saved for. When we are saved, what are we to become? How should we now be? Somebody may ask, yes, man of God, let Jesus save me. How should I change? I should be what now? You are saved to teach the thoughts of heaven. When the thoughts of heaven start filling you and influencing you, the fruits of the Spirit become evident to your life. Jesus said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Your life now speaks more than your words. Tell somebody, say a macho Christian, his life speaks more than his words. Because you have to become, not in your words, you become in your life. You are changed. You are not the same person. The things I used to do, I do them no more. That is just it. There must be a change. We have all done things for which we are ashamed of. And we live in the tension of what we have been. And what we want to what? Become. You have to leave the past. Apostle Paul had a past. He was a serious, he did wickedness in the eyes of God. But when Jesus changed him, he was free indeed. Love for Jesus. You can be free indeed. I say you can be free indeed. Amen. The spirit of a mature Christian will not be comfortable in a lot of weaknesses. There are times that you may feel disturbed because of the mistake you made. That is a mature person. When you are not disturbed because of the error you made, you are not a mature person in Christ. This means our conscience become an effective tool 
to guide us in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You can't minimize your conscience. We are saved to become in the fullness of Christ. Paul said not that I have reached perfection. It means that there is no point of satiating for a mature person. So all pride is excluded for the truly spiritual. Because there is no point of I have arrived. Because there is no point of I have arrived. All pride now is what? Excluded. The more mature you become in the spirit, it is a product of your more what? Dependence. And that more dependence reflects humility in you. Because you never see yourself. You see only Christ as the standard. Am I speaking to somebody? You never see yourself. You see only Christ as the standard. Which you have to what? Meet up to. Which you have to meet up to. So, no matter how Jesus will anoint me in the future, the day I make an error to see myself, that day I'm making a mistake in the spirit. All is of his grace. What if he takes his grace? You are a sinner. Love for Jesus. But now that he has given the grace, we must depend on him. We have received a gift that we could not give ourselves. Tell somebody, say we have received a gift, we have received a gift 